Well, good afternoon, traders. And I think if you're bearish on markets, you're probably having a bit of a better say today. Uh, you know, you had been coming at, you had come into the market expecting a slightly weaker open in Asia, uh, based on the fact that the U.S. markets hadn't performed as well as we'd been expecting based off the futures market yesterday. Um, and I think if you're bearish, you're probably sitting there saying, suggesting, you know, the fact that we haven't seen anyone really buying the weakness in the Asian equity markets today is probably a small win for us. Uh, in fact, if you overlook at what's happening in the fixed income markets, then you're probably getting even more of a, a positive feel to that because, you know, the back end of the curve is working quite nicely at the moment. You're seeing a, a really nice move and pulling away below 3% in tens. Uh, 30 years breaking below, uh, you know, a number of resistance levels and, and yields are going lower there as well. And we are seeing, uh, you know, the yield curve flattening out. In fact, the two tens, which is getting all the media press at the moment, is the flattest uh, in this cycle run. Uh, the Fed will also like to look at uh, the three month uh, and 10 year as well. I think that's probably the, say something like the New York Fed's preferred measure. They see that as the most accurate pre pre predictor of recessions over there. So three month and, and 10 year spreads. Um, we also like to uh, have a look at what's happening between twos and fives and, and, and that has actually gone into full inversion. Uh, so the idea here is that the Federal Reserve will continue to raise rates in the short term, uh, but they're likely to pause and perhaps there's even a chance that they could see rate cuts coming through in the, uh, in the further years ahead. And that's something that we can see in the interest rate markets as well. And there's no doubt that a lot of attention is being put on the idea that we could see this pausing cycle. Uh, if you have a look at Fed funds futures uh, and look what's priced in for 2019, we've got about 41 basis points of hikes. So that's one hike. Uh, and about a 40% chance of a second hike coming through. Compare that to what the Federal Reserve have got, which is uh, they've got three rate hikes priced in. One suspects and one believes there's a good possibility in the December meeting that they could actually acknowledge that. Perhaps they could even lower their dot plot projections for 2019. You know, that's a small lift, but we'll see how that goes. Now, if you have a look at the euro dollar futures, the interest rate market there, and we can actually see that between 2019 and to, uh, 2021, that there's actually 10 basis points of cuts being priced into the market. So if you think about that dynamic that's playing through, the euro dollar market is actually pricing in cuts. So it's not just a pause, the market's actually saying there's a chance we could see a policy mistake and the Fed may have to unwind some of that situation. Now it's interesting if you have a look at the FX markets that we aren't seeing uh, too much of a move in the US dollar uh, and I think that's probably a little bit wrong. Um, I think the US, the, the US dollar now does have some downside risks against the yen and perhaps more so against the euro. I think the euro dollar looks quite interesting. We saw the bearish outside, or the bullish outside week last, uh, bearish outside day last week. Uh, that saw some follow through buying, but it hasn't really pushed back up again there. So I think if we can get a break above 114.02 on euro dollar, then we go up to the neckline of the inverse head and shoulders. That comes in around 114.50. That's the big level in euro dollar. If we get a break and, and closing break above there, I think we probably end up going up to 116, 117 in euro dollar, despite the euros really not looking that attractive at all. Euro Aussie I think looks quite interesting as well. We're filling the gap on the daily chart there which we can see uh, from earlier in the week after we got um, the obviously the agreement between Xi and, and Donald Trump. And if that breaks through there then I think we could probably uh, make a move higher in Euro Aussie as well. But obviously gaps are there to be filled and we'll be watching price action around that gap. If we do see the sellers come in I'd be joining that one because it's going lower. If, if gaps are filled and pushed higher then of course respect that as well. So put Euro Aussie on the card. In fact, what we've been seeing today from the RBA has been quite interesting as well. There hasn't really been a move from the Reserve Bank, but they have looked at the global trade situation in a bit more depth. They have to acknowledge the slowdown there as well. Uh, they've acknowledged a little bit more about what's going in housing. There's a few more quantifiable measures about credit to demand, and, and they've explored that in a bit more depth. Uh, they've also talked up the idea of wages. Wages, of course, have gone up from 2.1 to 2.3 percent, but they're still at very sanguine levels. But the market hasn't really moved on this. It hasn't really been any kind of meat on the bone uh, for us to change our perception about how the RBA trade next year. Uh, the market's still only giving about a 60% probability of a rate hike by December next year. The other big talking point is what happens in oil. We are seeing oil up about 1%, US crude, Brent price is up fairly a similar amount. Now as we go into the uh, OPEC meeting on Thursday, um, I think the market is thoroughly expecting a, uh, a cut in production and that shouldn't really surprise. Now if you think that OPEC are producing around 50 million barrels a day and, and it's widely agreed that the, the imbalance at the moment is about 1.3 million barrels a day in terms of uh, what's being produced relative to demand, you know, that's what 2.5% uh, of the oil production being cut on a daily basis, which isn't really that much, to be honest. So we really should be getting uh, a cut there. But the balancing act for OPEC as well, of course, is they can't push oil prices too high because that incentivizes, you know, uh, what's happening from the US. 
uh, and that's just going to play into their hands. Um, but at the same time, they obviously don't want to um, overdo this uh, and, 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 and ease off as well because they do need to balance the oil market and, and cause prices to move up to some degree. Otherwise, we risk a fiscal crisis in a number of these OPEC nations as well. So there really is going to be a fine balancing act from, from OPEC nations and the 10 non-OPEC nations there as well. So that's going to be a big event that we're going to be watching this week. But at the moment, you know, I think the interesting situation is until we can get a break above 28.15 in the S&P, you know, these markets are likely to chop around and potentially even gravitate down. The market's seeing through the agreement between President Xi and Trump, and I think that's a really interesting situation. But watch what's happening in the interest rate pricing and certainly what's happening in the bond market at the moment, because that's telling you a fairly clear story about how things are playing out in the future here.